Hello, hello, this is Quinn with PTSD, while black. Welcome back to my space. I do want to remind you that this is my channel, which is supportive of people living with complex PTSD, living with being black, <laughs> living with um, realities that other people may not get. So I wanted to talk about the topic for those of us who are survivors of gang stalking, um, because it can contribute to one's post-traumatic stress disorder, that um, I'm going to take off my glasses because the glare is bugging. Anyway, those of us who have uh, complex post-traumatic traumatic stress disorder may have been affected by gang stalking, so, or vice versa. Gang stalking could have caused PTSD within people because there are some severe things that have been done to us which have not been owned up to by those creating the situations. And so we are still live, still left with living with the trauma. Um, and for people who are like saying, mm, just get over it or move on, we would love to. Trust, you're tired of hearing about it? Think about how tired we are of living it, right? But with complex trauma and PTSD, these are things that um, will play a loop which can be uh, re-triggered by a sight, a sound, a smell, a scent, a, a, a look, you know, depending on what your trauma is. I have a whole bunch of them because I'm a survivor of a bunch of shit and the world's like, damn, we still can't take her out. So, mm. <laughs> but I wanted to provide some support for other people living with trauma because as I'm saying it to you, I'm saying it for myself. Um, just like there's racial trauma that exists, we are going to get triggered by the gaslighters that say, oh, why don't you get over it? I don't say why you're still talking about race. Well, because the racist issues have not been addressed. Just like why the Confederates are still flying their flag in the South, even though they lost the war. There is some trauma there too, but it hasn't been addressed. Okay? They've tried to get over it. And look what they're doing. They're killing everybody. Come on. Come on now. So... Here instead is just more of an exception of what does trauma look like for someone? What does complex PTSD look like? I had this article that I found on um, healthline.com. It's called Seven Reminders to Carry With You on Your Trauma Recovery Journey. Um, and this was reviewed by Karen Jepp. Uh, Sai B. <laughs> words. But anyway, um, trauma describes your emotional response to an experience that makes you feel threatened, afraid, and powerless. There's no set threshold on what trauma is, what harm is bad enough to cause trauma. So you can't tell somebody what their experience is supposed to be that could have caused it. A traumatic event could involve a single brush with death like a car crash, but traumatic events can also be complex or ongoing and repeated over time like neglect or abuse. So gang stalking is a form of abuse and they use ambient abuse, which are um, <laughs> recording sights, sounds, suggestions um, to create a reaction in someone, basically so that you think that you're fucking crazy. Trauma can challenge your ideas of how the world works and who you are as a person. This disruption can have a ripple effect on all corners of your life, from your plans for the future to your physical health and relationship with your own body. So, yeah, what I want to note that they say here in this article is that recovery happens in stages. It is not instantaneous. So in the case, in my case, with the gaslighting gang stalkers, they're still sending like the, they're still doing the ambient abuse with like some TikTok posts being recommended for me on my For You page. I just now scroll through them because I'm like, whatever, it's not for me. Or if they're trying to say a message to me, I just like, oh, let's repost because I feel the same way about you. Uh, <laughs> I just keep it moving. But um, so I want you to know that that your recovery from trauma happens in stages. There's pre-trauma characteristics. Stage one. These refer to the traits and viewpoints you held before the trauma. You can think of this stage as your general state when the trauma occurs. And sometimes we're trying to get back to that normal. Two, rumination. In this stage, your brain works to process the trauma and figure out what happened. You may have a lot of strong feelings and intrusive memories at this stage. And I have definitely um, been through that. Of like, oh my God, what the hell is going on? There's this sudden um, reaction to things. 
this is where journaling becomes so helpful to helping to own what is my own reality. Number three, event centrality. This stage marks a turning point. Here you take stock of how trauma has changed your life and what you want to do going forward. And that is what stage I'm in right now because I have been through the naming what's going on and pinpointing what's going on and I recognize, yep, it has impacted my life. Now, what do I wanna do going forward? Well, I've decided I'm gonna make something beautiful as best as I can from this experience to help other people who are living with trauma to not feel so alone or isolated, um, that you have this, this reality that somebody else sees you. You are not alone. Um, so that's what I'm doing is I'm linking dealing with my survival to helping others to heal. <clears throat> Um, and it has changed my life dealing with this uh, gang stalking. I think I talked about it in the last video of, okay, I'm accepting that there are going to be some people who are willing to be paid to harass other citizens. There are people who are willing to do that. If they come into this space, they're going to get healed. They're going to find humor. They're going to find creativity. Oh, well, that's what you're going to find if you come over here, baby. I'm <laughs> just like, mm, let it go, Okay. Uh, the fourth stage is control. In this stage, you begin taking active steps to change your life and cope with your trauma symptoms. And I've done this already with surviving rape. I've done this with surviving a house fire. And I've done this with a car accident. So I guess I'm the right one for the gang stalkers to come after because I've already processed three other things. Um, <laughs> three other massive traumas. So, um, baby, what you doing? Um... <clears throat> Number five is mastery. Here you begin to adjust to your new post-trauma life. Refining your coping skills as you go. While the trauma may still affect you, at this stage it no longer controls your life. And I am looking forward to that. I am absolutely looking forward to it. So I know that there are other people who have lived through trauma. And I know that there is hope for me too. And I'm doing the same thing for others who are living through um I almost said gaslighting, but it's kind of the same thing. Those who are living through gang stalking. Um, there are others who have survived it. I'm in the middle of it. You're watching my journey right now. That's what you're getting to do. And I hope that I get to be on the other side of it. I hope to be like, what ifs? You know, whatever. And that's kind of where I have gotten centralized in my heart. Whatever the people who have initiated this choose to do is no reflection of my life and what I choose to do with my precious valued life today. And that's what I hope that you get for yourself. <clears throat> that your life has value and worth right here and right now and nobody else can tell you what to do with it. This is yours. You've got, a, you've, you've got choices. Now they may try to limit some choices, but it's up for you to be cre creatively come to know what other choices are available. Me, I'm going to make some balloon animals for my little cousin's birthday. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Um, but I love that this article, and I'll put a link to it below, it tells us that healing is not a competition. So I don't need to fucking heal on anybody else's timeline. If you are tired of hearing me talk about this, hmm, how about you scroll? How about you move along? Unsubscribe? Go live your life. No one is forcing you to watch this video. Unless you're getting paid to gang stalk me, then yeah, that's a choice that you made. Welcome. Have a seat. But you have choices too. I understand that you may have accepted payment or a gas card or a food card to a, a, a restaurant or a grocery store because you were in desperate need. So you took this assignment. I understand. I see you. You're tired of hearing about it? How about you use what you learn here on my channel to help heal yourself? Here's some free motherfucking therapy. You're welcome. <laughs> um, but here's the other thing that I just wanted to point to, and that's for those of you watching us. Watching us go through our recovery from trauma. It's okay for you to say, I'm uncomfortable seeing you go through this. I'm afraid you might not be who you were before this happened. I fear losing you. 
Those, it's okay for you to inventory what your reality is watching someone go through complex PTSD. But it is not your responsibility to force your views on the person who is living with this trauma. I think one of the best sayings that I ever heard when I first started going through my uh, PTSD journey was telling someone with complex PTSD to calm down is like telling someone with epilepsy to just stop having seizures. And guess who you're looking at who is having seizure-like episodes at this time? Well, I've lived with them. I've lived with them. I'm not having them for the past three months, so that's super cool because I'm finding other ways to cope emotionally and, and reduce stress before I get into letting my body have those episodes. So, which is super cool. It's super cool, but it's taking the time it's going to take. The point being is you can't tell someone to just stop reacting to trauma. If you really give a fuck about somebody who's going through complex PTSD, if you really care about that person's life, you'll ask, how can I hold space for you? You will say, I see you, that your view is valid, or I don't know how to hold space for you but I do see you. Or you can say nothing the fuck at all and keep walking. Or better yet, you can pay for our therapy sessions. There are choices. You have choices too. So thank you so much for visiting me here on PTSD While Black. I know um, I made this a little bit for the people who are coming at us. They're saying, oh, just get over it. But really, this is more importantly for you as someone who is living with complex trauma complex PTSD or a survivor of gang stalking. This is here. I'm, I'm going to be making videos to help normalize our experiences and what we go through. Because the number one thing is that I'm here to be committed to my own healing, to my own growth, to my own recovery. And that is my top priority. That is my main business. Um, whether the stalker stops stalking, Powerless over that, but I can work on my response to this complex trauma that I'm living with. I can be gentle with myself. I can have compassion for myself. And I offer for you to do that same thing for yourself. Have some compassion for yourself as you go through this journey. And it's okay if you don't do it perfectly. It's okay if you make mistakes. You're still worthy and you're still whole. Till next time, peace.